Well, hello, YouTubers, and welcome to this 11th episode of this old planer. Well, today we're going to go into the final stages of disassembly and prepping the planer body for uh, painting, um, and then also do some um, failure, failure diagnosis in the process, although there isn't really much to diagnose in this case. Um, as I was raising the table up, it gets easier as it comes up, which means the lower reaches of the guides are still too tight and the guides on the on the table aren't adjustable. So I've been tinkering with the idea of maybe putting guides in that are adjustable or in some in this case uh, going into failure diagnosis and see if the guides themselves that are stationary in the machine may need either scraped or reground. Um, unfortunately, I'm my uh, big micrometer is in the States, so I have to uh, improvise and then see what else I can do. Now, I do have a dial caliper at home, and I'll probably bring that along to see if there's any measurable difference um, from the top of the guides down to the bottom. If there is, then we'll either probably just stick those guides on the grinder and just take off you know a thousandth of a millimeter or two and color it good uh, so that uh, the tension is equal all the way up and down the travel of the of the elevation uh, guide so anyway we got the head out of the machine uh, and de-rusted it we used this rostio uh, de-rusting gel and it worked actually pretty damn good. I was uh, kind of surprised. It's been sitting here for a while. I used it on uh, other parts of the machine and it did a really good job and it's been sitting here for you know, a little over a year I think and uh, I was thinking well maybe it's lost its potency but uh, so far it hasn't. It's it's still doing the, doing its thing. I remember it smelling intensely like vinegar when I first got it, but uh, it still has a faint vinegar smell. Um, but then again, after using it on the machine yesterday, uh, it cleaned it right up within a matter of hours, and it just uh, it took a, a wire brush to it after I scraped off the the goop, um, and then cleaned it right up. So it polished up real nice. Now it's out there soaking in a little bit of cutting oil so that uh, the cast iron doesn't uh, flash rust. So one of the things that, I, that happened, um, I gotta put this on an arbor and turn it down, is when I was removing this from the shaft to the head, um, I hit this edge here with the with the plastic mallet and it was already broken before and like a Mr. Bozo came along and you know told me here you know you need to hit this spot so I did and it snapped it right off. So I had to rebraze that but uh, yeah, I got to go back and and uh, put this, like say, on a on an arbor and uh, and uh, return it so that it's it's back in round and back in balance. So now the next step is we're going to put eye bolts on the uh, the elevation the the table elevator or the table itself and hoist it out. There's four bolts that hold it in place. We'll show you that all here when we go out to the to the pointer, but. Um, uh, interesting, this is also an, another little uh, review of the uh, fine cordless drill. Um, I was really shocked to see how well this thing actually functions. Um, it's, the chuck on it is, is solid enough to where it will grip a, uh, a, a tap and uh, you can actually tap, use a hand tap. You know, there's a set of three with hand taps. Um, cutting threads into, into cast iron. It was <laughs> rather surprising actually to see that thing actually does work quite well. Um, I've seen it done with other uh, cordless drills. However, the, uh, the chucks have a tendency to slip and you know, you put some gronk on this one and it, it holds it pretty good. So anyway, let's go on out to the uh, planer and take a look at what we're doing. So here you can see the rust has been removed from the infeed table and this is all one big casting. Sorry for the shaky footage here. It's all handheld right now. But down here on the elevator screw we've got four bolts that hold this thing 
in here. You can't quite see them in the dark here, but they're there. Um, these are the two holes for the eye bolts that I already drilled and tapped. Um, there was a, a screw hole there already, but uh, I went and drilled it out to uh, hold an M12 eye bolt. And so now we're getting ready to lift this out. As I said, the uh, the head is already out. So now we're going to go out and uh, on the front side of the table, on the infeed side, we're going to put two holes in there, uh, relatively, uh, you know, use a nominal distance. So where uh, those holes later on are going to be used for the uh, exhaust hood or the uh, the, the the chip collector, um, it gets stuck into the front, and it'll be routed to where it comes out the front and then goes down and hooks into a hose. And then that way, uh, the chute that was in there before was just basically a uh, piece of sheet metal that was hung on the, the back end. You saw the two screw holes that were already there. Um, and it just discharged the, the chips out the bottom of the chute. Now this is using it uh, when it's when the machine's being used for joining over the top of the, uh, the uh, um, top of the table. And one of the things we're going to do with this as well is we're going to uh, drill some holes in it to where we can uh, place some uh, angle iron. And because uh, when you make two by fours or two by sixes, you know, and you stand them on edge, they have a tendency to want to squirt out from underneath the head. And so if your two by four isn't quite square, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, is the thing going to come out. Uh, all crooked or parallaxed to where you have a, a, a rhomboid shape as opposed to a nice rectangle. So we're going to make some guides and put those in later but for today we're going to drill those holes with the uh, with the magnet drill and we're going to put those center because um, you want something like that fairly centered on the on the machine. You can set it off, offset it to one side or the other, but when you are uh, running the table up and down, that added weight can actually kind of make the thing tilt a little bit and then you got again parallax problems. So we're going to center those uh, relatively or put it relatively close on center as, as much as we can um, and then like I say drill the holes. We're going to lay it, do it a little bit of a layout in the uh, in the table um, with scribe and then uh, put a line there drill our holes and then uh, later on once we get that done we'll make the guides so that way um, you can do narrow boards you know from one by uh, to up to you know to three by without the thing trying to tip over as it's going through the through the planer and then again on the front we're going to make those holes and then uh, use those later on for uh, the chip collector hood. So anyway, let's uh, go get our magnetic um, drill press and uh, go to work. So here on the table we have a lip on either side and so we're going to establish center. And we have exactly 500 and 505 millimeters, so that would be 27.5. So that would be, uh, let's see, 25 plus seven and a half. So that'd be 257 and a half millimeters. Now I'm just using a pencil here because this is going to be plenty accurate enough. We're just trying to establish a baseline here on the center of the table. So shop grade and square is plenty good enough for this purpose. And we're going to use this as our baseline here. So now we've got that established. Now for the 2x4 or 1x on edge. Now with Two by fours and, and uh, two and one by uh, you know for one by or four. Yeah, try that again. With uh, boards, when you're trying to edge boards on this way through the planer, uh, if you do them, if you try and double them up, sometimes they they won't pull through because one is going to end up being slightly dimensionally different than the other. So what we're going to do here is uh, essentially meant measure. 
uh, 20 millimeters, that's a 1 by, and then uh, 50 millimeters for a 2 by. So we're going to establish that right here and uh, have that on this front, cor front corner. So what we're going to end up doing later on is we're going to put a slot in our guides that you can bring them closer together, stick them in there. There'll be a, an edge here on the lip to where you can just run them up, bolt them down, and you're good to go. So, let's see, there's, it's all open through. So we'll go uh, 50 millimeters, so that's two inches from the edge. And then we'll go back here to the other edge. Let's see how far back this goes. So we're at 31 is the furthest back it goes. So we'll take and go 20 centimeters. So that's 200 millimeters or 8 inches roughly on this right here. So now we can take our square and establish where we need to drill. Same thing here. So we missed our mark by just ever so slightly. So we'll just extend that. And so we have 25 here. As I said before, the slots are going to end up being a little bigger, so that way uh, there's going to be plenty of play to where the machine or the, the guides can actually bolt into the machine without too much problem. What I would like to do later on is uh, this would be actually beneficial if the guy had a pin, but again, uh, for one side at least, to where you can maintain square, but uh, where this part of the thing is a thickness planer, so square uh, to the longitudinal line isn't really all that critical. It's just square to the table, and that's what we're trying to establish here. So let me get a center punch, and then we'll start drilling.
Well, YouTubers, it's been a few exasperating days here getting this last few stages of the uh, teardown completed. Uh, I had to remove the clutch for the feed mechanism. And what it basically, well, what it is is you got two halves, two discs that one, I'll show you some pictures right here. Here's the uh, engagement disc. And here's the uh, power disc that uh, ends up driving the belts for the feed mechanism. So, um, the power takes off from the main shaft up top and it goes down to the, um, the big shiv, the hollow one. And then you engage the, the clutch by pushing that, uh, um, the geared uh, shiv into the other one. Now there's like a 2%, I've been trying to measure it and I can't quite figure out because in the hollow one, uh, it's worn to the point where it has a, a curve in it. So I can't really determine what the actual degrees are. Um, I came close at about two degrees. So with the other uh, disc tomorrow on the, on the lathe, I'm gonna make sure that it is indeed uh, two degrees or somewhere thereabouts, find out, measure it, and see how it, how it comes out. Um, got the belt, main belt pulley here all dressed up. Um, brazed it, got that brazed part of it all repaired and looking pretty again. Um, I didn't take any footage of it. Uh, it's just a standard brazed job, a little bit of lathe work. You guys have seen that stuff before. Uh, I did stick it on an arbor, however, so that uh, the accuracy was was guaranteed. But uh, it's looking pretty good. It'll it still has some serviceable life to it, so it'll uh, it'll work for what we need it for. <clears throat> now, on the table, uh, I've got quite a few stills here, and so as I go through the monologue here, um, I'll uh, I'll blend in the. Uh, the stills so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. Now the elevation uh, mechanism is going to stay in the machine. I'm not going to take it out. I'm probably just going to put some grease zerks on it. Um, you know, kick the, uh, the, the leaf cutter bees out and uh, out of the holes and then put zerks in there so that uh, there is some lubrication there for that main shaft as it turns. But other than that, I'm not going to do a whole lot with that. I'm just going to leave everything alone. There were some shims. Here's some pictures, um, or some footage, I should say. Um, so here's what this looks like inside. These are the guides, and you can tilt them and lean them back. This side was shimmed, this side was not. So now we need to pull these out and see where we're at. So the interesting thing about this, uh, these guides is they're V-guides. And I didn't realize that until I got the whole thing apart. Um, as you saw in the footage, um, as I lifted the whole table up, the, the uh, internal guides just kind of fell into the inside of the machine. And um, they're held in place by four bolts. Here's a still. And so when you pull that all up out of there, it just kind of falls out if the, if the bolts are backed off. Now, the bolts serve two, two functions. One is to <clears throat> center the table in the machine and then also adjust for tilt. And on the side plates, here's the pictures. You got uh, the one side plate that holds all the gears. This is, that's that one right here. And then on the opposite side, you have another side plate, and these actually adjust the tilt. Now, these being V-guides, as you adjust the tilt, 
you can, or, or push in on them, you can uh, adjust the tightness of the guides. Kind of an ingenious uh, setup, really. I, I was kind of figuring I'd have to uh, make uh, a dovetail guide set for this, but this will work just fine as long as the guy knows what he's dealing with. And so uh, the one thing I will do, however, is I'm going to put an oil groove uh, in the guides so that way uh, I can get some lubrication down to in between the two uh, surfaces that uh, made up. And then that way it'll have <coughs> excuse me, some lubrication. So, um, teardown's complete on so far. Um, I started painting some of these things. And so, um, let's see. Anyway, um, let's see. Well, I'm kind of drawing a blank here as far as where we're at. We're just, you know, going through and you know tearing down we got the other idler roll out um, I'm gonna come back to the idler rolls maybe in the next episode I'm not sure just depends on how how far ahead I get tomorrow um, we're gonna do something a little different with these when they go back in and um, the ones almost all finished I haven't even I don't know if I've, I've worked that footage up yet or not but uh, uh, there's going to be four little holes put into it and then some springs uh, inlet into those holes so that way the roller is trying to you know not just relying on gravity but uh, there's also some spring tension there holding that thing in place so that when you pr twist in the uh, the lubrication cups uh, to adjust the balance and the height and all that uh, the thing won't just slop around it it actually has a little bit of a uh, some resistance there so we'll get into that in, a, in another episode but uh, again uh, not today so anyway that's the gist of what's been going on so far with this old planer um, hope you guys have enjoyed so, uh, following along so far um, once I get the painting and, and the rest of the machining done uh, which isn't going to be much. It's just going to be the clutch, you know, resurfacing that the, that mating face, and then um, cleaning up the the whole thing. Uh, then there's of course a, a brass half ring. I got to remake that. I got to look and see if I can get some material from eBay. Um, if not, kind of figure out how to play it by ear on that. Um, it's kind of a weird setup. You saw. Here's the picture of it. So you kind of get an idea, you know, the whole thing. I don't know what they were thinking when they when they put this thing together. The um, the pin on it looks to be tapered, but then it's all wallered out because over the years it just from shoving it back and forth, it just it didn't have any way to to, to uh, pull it down into the tapered hole and secure it. Um, looks like there might have been a screw on there at one time, and it ripped off or something. Um, I'm not sure how it was set up, but uh, we'll take a look at that again later on and see how we're going to make one of those rings and uh, go from there. So anyway, that's a wrap for this episode of this old planer on the final teardown. Hope you guys enjoyed following along so far and uh, got a little something out of it. Uh, during the during the reassembly of the thing, we'll get into the uh, the dynamics and the and the, the technicalities of setting up the the guides and all that. So um, there'll be more intense setup videos on that. So anyway, with that, we'll hope the guys. Yeah. So with that, um, that's a wrap. And if you guys have any thoughts, comments, suggestions, critiques. Put them down in the doobly-doo down below. And uh, for those of you guys who are new to the channel, don't forget to rate, subscribe, and all that good jazz. As you can tell, I'm not used to plugging. But anyway, uh, thank you for stopping by, and we'll see you guys again all soon.